All right, this is the first video on causes of the Spanish Civil War, 1936 to 39. And this goes with the paper two topic, Causes, Practices, and Effects of 20th Century Wars. So we'll begin with just a overview of the war. So the Spanish Civil War took place between 1936 and 1939. The two sides of the war were the leftist Republican government and the rightist nationalist rebels. It began in July 1936 when a group of right-leaning generals attempted a coup against the democratically elected Second Spanish Republic and succeeded in some places like Morocco but failed in others like the capital of Madrid and other urban areas. Spain was then basically split in two, and for the next three years, the nationalist rebels slowly gathered territory until they finally captured Madrid in 1939, and the war was declared over. The subsequent government, the nationalist government, led by dictator Francisco Franco, would then run Spain until his death in 1975. At the time, the war was immediately recognized as a key moment in the 20th century, um, as in many instances it foreshadowed the Second World War. As well, in some people's eyes, the war became representative of the early 20th century struggle between the dominant post-World War I ideologies of communism and fascism. One British volunteer in the Spanish Civil War said that, quote, everybody saw Spain as the epitome of the particular conflict with which they were concerned. To the right, this was a war to defend religion and tradition against the progressive agenda of communist and other leftists, and to the left, this was a chance to stop fascism. For these reasons, the war garnered international attention, and Hitler, Mussolini, and Stalin all got involved, as did many volunteers from Western nations who saw this as an opportunity to stop fascism, like your favorite, George Orwell. World War II has then vastly colored the historiography of the event and made it difficult to separate the two in many people's minds, but we will do our best to look at the war uh, in a more complex and nuanced manner than simply as a prologue to World War II. So we'll start with the long-term causes of the Spanish Civil War, going back to sort of the origins of modern Spain. So historian Anthony Beaver has identified three interlinked debates in Spain that eventually led to civil war. These three debates are liberalism versus conservatism, as in sort of the Enlightenment-style liberal thought versus more traditional thought in Spain. Centralism versus regionalism, central government ruling over the country versus regions having autonomy and, and ruling for themselves. And authoritarianism versus individualism, as in was the collective more important than the individual. Overall, the nationalist rebels in the war were more cohesive, um, representing a more conservative, centralist, authoritarian group. The Republican government, on the other hand, were a more fractured group, all believing in liberal philosophies to a degree, but disagreeing on what those philosophies were, as well as the question of centralism or authoritarianism. According to Beaver, these three debates had their beginnings in the Middle Ages in Spain when the Castilians uh, retook Spain from the Moors in the Reconquista. This was in 1492 when it finished. Uh, King Ferdinand of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile conquered Spain from the Moors and set about unifying Spain under Isabella's home region of Castile. The Castilian Isabella wanted to rule all of Spain from Castile. This was objected to by regions uh, like Catalonia and the Basque that desired autonomy as well as disliked the authoritarian nature of the monarchy's rule. Many people in Spain identified by local region or even spoke a dialect different from the Spanish of the Castilians 
And so, in particular, you had regions like Catalonia that resented the forced rule of another place like Castile, which they viewed as almost like a different country, um, against them. In 1640, Catalonia and Portugal, actually, which was a region at the time, both rose up against the Spanish crown, and Portugal successfully broke away, but Catalonia was forcibly retaken. When Catalonia sided with England during the War of Spanish Succession, the Bourbon King Philip V of Spain actually stripped Catalonia of its autonomy, and that happens throughout its history. It goes back and forth. Sometimes it is um, given more autonomy and independence, and other times it's forcibly sort of incorporated into the national government of Spain, even to this day, as in, in the last year you've seen this. Supporting the monarchy was the Catholic Church, which experienced unprecedented power in Spain. This was, of course, the home of the Inquisition and of sending conquistadors abroad to new colonies in America, which just happened to coincide with the end of the Reconquista, uh, where the conquistadors, you know, forcibly converted natives. So the Catholic Church was an extremely dominant force in Spanish politics and the Spanish monarchy. And thus, there was a lot of resentment uh, against them, as well as the monarchy, who they kind of saw as very much one and the same. Some saw it that way, at least. In the 19th century, a new dimension was added to this struggle with the introduction of enlightened liberalism. Spain had been barely touched by the Enlightenment and the Reformation due to the Catholic Church's connection to the monarchy. They successfully kept those ideas out. Uh, people who already resented the monarchy and the church for their oppressive rule over the centuries began to latch on to these new political ideas coming from the Enlightenment in France, Scotland, and Germany that essentially advocated for less control by the monarchy and more control with, uh, or more control for the people, more power to the people, democracy. According to historian Paul Preston, there were, quote, efforts made throughout Spanish history to bring Spanish politics into line with the country's social reality, but each time reactionary elements in Spanish politics crushed any reform that might threaten their privileged position. The monarchy and the church attempted to keep these ideas out, but by the late 19th century, they had begun to seep into Spanish society. These resentments against the monarchy brewed for years and then started to emerge in the 1800s in a series of attempted coups. The monarchy had weakened by this point in the 1800s. Their economy had um, been doing worse. Uh, they were losing American colonies to independence. And that showed in the fact that between 1814 and 1874, there were 37 attempted coups, with 12 actually being successful in overthrowing the government. One of those was from 1873 to 1874, Spain experienced a brief republic known as the First Republic. Uh, this was a democratic system, but the military soon came in and restored the monarchy as it better suited their purposes. In 1898... Uh, Spain lost to the United States in the Spanish-American War, which really was the end of Spain's uh, power abroad. And by the 1930s, those debates over regionalism versus centralism, authoritarianism versus individualism, and liberalism versus conservatism were still around. Um, and there had been these sort of violent attempts to resolve them, but... Um, they were still there by the 1930s. What had changed by the 1930s and the reason they came to a head then in the Civil War was the introduction of new philosophies and the boiling over of socioeconomic problems. So Spain had a massive wealth disparity that led to it being one of the most unequal nations in Europe. The census of 1788 showed that almost 50% of the adult male population of Spain was not involved in any form of productive work. Instead, they were in the nobility, or in the church, or in the military as an officer. And in terms of land, half of Spain was owned by around 50,000 individuals on these huge estates known as latifundios. Agricultural laborers and poor tenant farmers then were forced to rent land from these uh, latifundios or work on them and really were out of work sometimes during the year when harvests were bad and basically lived in extreme poverty. 
the agricultural work they did was primitive. It had remained unchanged since the Middle Ages. Tools were used that had been around since the Bronze Age, and little had changed in hundreds if not thousands of years for these farmers. Rather than try and use modern farming techniques or technology, the lot of fundios preferred to exploit the masses of poor peasants to make profits, and so they purposefully made it so they were still working the land as they had for hundreds of years. Education was also lacking, as literacy was low for these people, as low as 20% literacy in some rural areas. This extreme poverty um, was, was pretty bad. According to historian Piers Brendan, over half of Spain went to bed hungry each night. <clears throat> some survived on foraging for acorns and grasses when there were periodic famines, and life expectancy in the countryside of Spain in the 1930s was 35, the same as it had been in the 1400s. As a result of this, there was intense class hatred between the poor farmers and these latifundios, these estates, uh, and then the upper classes likewise despised the lower, seeing them as different. The only thing that the central government offered was the repressive civil guard or Guardia Civil. This was a militarized police force that was established in 1840 and essentially would be sent in to quell any unrest in the countryside, and they became hated by uh, the, the lower classes. In terms of urban issues, only around 18% of Spain worked in industry and mining. The rest were in agriculture. Industrial workers, though, likewise had low wages, poor working conditions, poor housing. There was virtually no social welfare safety net. There were no schools to provide education, no health services. Infant mortality rate was high for Spain. So by the 1930s, these regional and economic problems would lead to political divisions because you had different philosophies coming in in the late 1800s that I'm going to talk about in the next video that discussed how best to resolve these issues.